Regal Pale, one of America's two great beers, and the high-flying, fun-loving Regal Bird bring you now Ozark Jubilee. Crossroads of country music, the Jewel Theater in Springfield, Missouri. It's time for the Ozark Jubilee, starring America's favorite country gentleman, Fred Foley! Thank you so much, folks. Bless you. Bless you. <laughs> well, so we got a wonderful crowd here tonight, and this is the big night, I want you to know, for all of us connected here with the Ozark Jubilee. We know we've moved our permanent home here to Springfield, and boy, we're having a big time here at the Jewel Theater. And we're so grateful to the many, many people who have made this possible for us. And to all of you folks who are here in person tonight, uh, say welcome home. Well, we're going to trot out a little song here now, boys. The salt it down, something like the salty dog rag. Salty dog rag. Well, way down yonder in the state of Arkansas, where well, my great grandpa met my great grandpa. They drink apple cider and they get on a jack. They all dance, dance to the salty dog rag. One foot front. Drag it back, and then you start to fall the jack. You shake and you break and then you sag. If your partner sinks, you're supposed to sag. Your heart is light, you tap your feet in rhythm with that ragtime beat. Pack up your troubles in your old kit bag and dance all night to the salty dog rag. <laughs> things have happened to us during our week of moving back home and one of them was finding out that a fine magazine down in Atlanta Georgia had thought well enough of us Freddie if you just give me that to give us the front cover here Fred you might as well take this thank you good buddy so much to give us the front cover of their little magazine called the TV Digest and I I hope maybe that you folks can see this let me look right over here there it is. That don't look much like me from where I stand, but it is. <laughs> and right on the inside, they gave us a fine story. And I want you to look right here. Now, let me get that. Can you get that real close up there? We want to see if we can't make that picture come to life with our little square dancers, the tadpoles. Here they are. <laughs> Thank you. 
that, folks, ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you, those kids can really, really sing. Now, friends, we're going to pick up right where we're leaving off with more fun for you in just a minute. Hi, folks, I'm Jim Nars, and uh, tonight, by popular request, well, uh, the Regal Bird requested it, and he's pretty popular. Well, anyway, tonight, we're going to do another one of those uh, Regal Pale Square Dances. Okay, boys, let's go. And if you'll all follow the steps as I call them out, I think you'll have a lot of fun, okay? Y'all join hands and leave the floor. Skip to your tavern, skip to your store. Step right up and say it clear. Give me Regal, Regal Pale Beer. Fill your glasses, everyone, with crispy flavor and foamy fun. Rowdy down and hoopty doo. Well, sir, another party who came tonight to help us celebrate our homecoming is a fellow who used to be a member of the talent staff of KWTO right here in Springfield. Of course, he left his fine greener pastures, went out to Hollywood, worked with the Sons of the Pioneers, a wonderful group, and some Western pictures with our good friend Rex Allen. Here he is back home, friends, uh, to sort of help celebrate the the occasion, our good friend, Shug Fisher. Shug, Let's come here, here, boy. Hi, Howie. Thank you. Thank you very much. Here you go. I'll tell you. Oh, this is Shug, Thank you. Uh, I know you've been used to fine singing groups like the Sons of the Pioneers well, yeah. and, and also a good band. <laughs> yeah. So I thought we'd just turn the band over to you and the, and our singers, and buddy, you can just get over there and do anything you wish. Just, thank you, thank your you. your little old heart just gets full of it. That's what I had in my, in my mind, and I hope you don't mind. All right, thank you. Thank thank you, you. <laughs> All right, hit us an arpeggiatory. And the name is Sweetie Pie. I will inside my birdcage, uh, hanging way up high. I like to swing up on my perch and sing my with a song. There's a cat that's after me, and he won't let me alone. I talk, I talk, so I put the cat that's creeping up on me. I did a tall pretty cat, as plain as he could be. And only have one aim in life, and that is very plain. I want to catch that little bird and eat him right away. But just as I get close to him, this is what he'll say. I told I told a footy cat tweeping up on me. You better draw a footy cat. That footy cat is me. You're the cat hound. <laughs> That pretty cat hit him a very bad. He sneaks up from behind. I don't think I would like it if I knew what's on his mind. I have a strong suspicion his plan for me ain't good. I am inclined to think that he would eat me if he could. I used to scare old Herman and Carter. I'd like to eat that sweetie pie when he leaves his cage, but I can never catch him, and it drives me into a rage. You bet I'd eat that little bird if I could just get near. But every time that I approach, this is what I hear. I thought I saw a pretty cat creeping up on me. I did a tall pretty cat at plain as he Let me down, I 
couldn't make the cat hair thing in Yeah, how are you? Thank you very much. Thank you, Red. Ah, <laughs> oh, the one and only, Shug Fisher. Well, you know, down here in the Ozarks, when somebody distinguishes himself with outstanding service of one kind or another, we have a very special, special kind of award that we present. And here tonight, from Washington, D.C., to help the Ozark Jubilee with its homecoming, is one of the Ozarks best known citizens, Congressman Dewey Short. And folks, uh, to sort of do the presentation over here, we'd like to walk over here uh, and have you folks meet the president of the Chamber of Commerce here in Springfield, Dr. Derwood Hall. And Doc, uh, the Kodak is all yours. And here is Congressman Short. And uh, this is all, I don't know a thing about what's going to happen here, other than I knew it was going to happen. Thank you, Red. <laughs> Red, this is a real pleasure for me. As a chairman of the local Chamber of Commerce, I uh, have the greatest pleasure in presenting the uh, Honorary Ozark Hillbilly Award to one of our own native sons. This is the first time that it's ever been done to a native born. In fact, before that time, they've been considered ineligible. Uh, when you go to Texas, you become a Texas Ranger, do you? Uh, when you go to Kentucky, you might become a Kentucky Colonel if you drink from the left branch of the stream. But when you come to the Ozarks and to the Queen City of the Ozarks, you're made an honorary hillbilly. You and I are honorary native-born hillbillies. This is the first time we've made a presentation to one of our own men. We hope that you will wear this Ozark Hillbilly Medal proudly, and it's with great pleasure that I present it to you. And this certificate, which certifies that Jewish Yard, a member of Congress from the 7th Congressional District of Missouri, is our esteemed and honored guest, has this day been publicly presented with the Ozark Hillbilly Medallion properly inscribed by the Springfield Chamber of Commerce, and witness thereof is the mayor's signature and mine as president. Congratulations, sir. Hillbilly. Ah. <laughs> Congratulations. Dr. Hall and Red, this is certainly a case where the man bites the dog. <laughs> I doubt if anyone ever worked so little to win or earn a medal as I have this one, but I'm equally sure that no one ever received a medal of which he could be more proud than I am this. Once a hillbilly, always a hillbilly. <laughs> and since my grandpappy and granny short came from the hills of East Tennessee and my grandpappy and granny long came from the hills of southeastern Kentucky in 1849 and settled only 30 miles south of Springfield, of course, I have an incurable nostalgia for the hills. I'm glad to be back to Springfield, the queen city of the Ozark. I extend my congratulations to Lester Cox, to Ralph Foster, to Red Foley, to Slim Wilson, to my old friend Goo Goo Rutledge and the others <laughs> who contribute so much to the enjoyment and happiness of the American people. Mrs. Short and I watch this program every Saturday night and it's being heard by millions all over the nation. Congratulations and best luck. Congratulations to you, Congressman. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Once a hillbilly, always a hillbilly. No true words were ever. You know, we've got a... Hey, Oklahoma. They're going to be here next Saturday. <laughs> Boy, we got a scat of Oklahomans. I'll tell you what, we're going to turn the show over to Oklahoma next Saturday night. You folks will be watching. We got a youngster here now uh, who has made quite a name for himself just recently, and he has been writing songs and been singing them on record. And I think he's going to be over here with us regularly now. So you folks give a nice way. I tell you, he's written a song that's making quite a hit called "I Gotta Go Get My Baby." Let's say hello and a nice welcome to Marvin Rainwater. Marvin, come here, All right? Ah. Oh, Chief Rainwater. Well, that tune around, uh, Marvin, she wrote called I Gotta Go Get My Baby. Uh, it's making quite a splice around the country, my good boy. And uh, as long as you wrote it and recorded it and your records are for sale, I think this would be a good opportunity for you to sort of sell a few out there, huh? All righty. We'll do our What's best. What's the name of it once more? I Gotta Go Get My Baby. Oh, you go get your baby. Well, when I was 
woke up this fine bright morning and it didn't look right to me. It seemed like something was awful wrong and I wondered what it could be. I've been thinking about it all day long, trying to figure out what was wrong. Well, the answer just now comes to me, my darling baby's gone. Oh, I gotta go get my baby, whatever she may be. I gotta go get my baby. as can be, but I gotta go get my baby and bring her home with me. Well, I guess I took that gal of mine for granted too darn long. She must have got tired of waiting around, thought she did belong. But Lord knows I love that gal more than I've ever shown. I'm gonna bring my little baby back and place her on my throne. baby wherever she may be i gotta go get my baby and bring her home with me if i have to swim the ocean well look out mr c cause i'm gonna go get my baby and bring her home with me i gotta go get my baby wherever she may be I gotta go get my baby and bring her home with me. I hate to leave your company, it's jolly as can be. But I gotta go get that young man and bring her home with me. I gotta go get my baby and bring her home with me. Now then, neighbors, it's somebody else's turn to do the talking. Hi again. I felt another commercial coming on, but being out of breath from all that square dancing and all that, I figured I'd just lie down until the feeling went away. No. No, I, I can't do it. I keep thinking, supposing there's somebody out there, maybe you, just sitting there, feeling thirsty for something nice and cool and bright, just waiting for somebody to make a suggestion. And there I am lying there, not saying a word about Regal Pale. Why, you'd have to wait clear to the next commercial to find out that these thirst-quenching, soul-soothing suds are just exactly what you're hankering for. So, now that I got my breath back, I'd like to say that uh, if you're looking for real fun and refreshment, what you want is Regal Pale, one of America's two great beers. Well, sir, like everybody else uh, around here now, our boy in the black suit is sort of taken away with all of this crowd here tonight, so here he is, our ambassador of goodwill for the Ozark Jubilee, your friend and mine, Pete Stamper. Pete, come in here, buddy. Well, I had, a, had me a speech all planned tonight on opening and everything, but... Uh, in fixing it up, I learned something that I thought maybe might be more important to pass along, and that's, it's, it's a whole lot better to be wore down, uh, to be wore down trying to keep up with the fast pace that the world is going, than to be caught in the shuffle, than to be caught in the shuffle. <laughs> and, uh, You know what I mean about it. Uh, in fact, it's got so bad now that you can't walk down the street and tell if the man in front of you needs a haircut or if it's a woman that's just had her one. And uh, you, you take me, for instance. Now, I, I hung around down there at Dawson Springs all my life until Mr. Ed come along and started carrying me around with him. And Well, I ain't 
what you might say, caught up with no society yet, but I've seen where it's been, and, and I, I didn't, wasn't naming to, but I couldn't help a little bit of culture rubbing off on me. In fact, I guess probably if y'all hadn't already been told, y'all wouldn't know as a country boy just for looking at me. It's, it's, uh, and, and to show, I, one of my favorite pastimes used to be just sitting around uh, trying to figure out who people was, you know, by their appearance. And it's got to where you can't do that no more. I know over here in the bus station the other day, I was in there and I seen a farmer that had every appearance of everything but a farmer. And, and the only thing that made me realize that he was was a mashed thumb. And probably if you wasn't raised on the farm or around it, you wouldn't have told by that. But to me, it was just exactly a kind of a mash that you'd get from trying to drive a rusty nail through a leather hinge on the hen house door with the back end of a broad axe. And, and uh, <laughs> only a farmer will try something like that. It's, it's getting bad. Uh, to just show you how dangerous it can be, we had a fella down home that just hung around down there all of his life and didn't pay much attention to nothing. And finally, well, I don't care who it is, it's Shorty Hutt, who it was down there. <laughs> He, uh, all at once, he's walking down the road one day and something hit him and he didn't know nothing until he woke up in the hospital. And I got to the accident just as it happened. And, and I, noticed, I noticed on the truck there that hit him, it said United States Mail. And the doctor said on, under ordinary circumstances, he would have been all right just with about a week's rest. But uh, <laughs> well, that's been about a year ago and he, he ain't been what you might call just right. Since he woke up in the hospital and asked what hit him, somebody told him it was the post office there. Uh, I uh, tell you something else has changed too. <laughs> Used to be when somebody shook their fist at you, that mean fight. Uh, but the producer's doing that, and that means goodbye now and run, so I guess I'd better go. I'll see y'all. Thank you. Pete Stamper. Well, so we got to hurry right along now, so let's bring out a little yodeler, a little wonderful little singer here, one of our Ozark uh, properties right here, <laughs> little Miss Penny Nichols. Penny, uh, we got to hurry up now, and we, I'll tell you what we ought to do. Let's, let's do something sort of special on this. You want to? Let's kind of dress it up, do like they do in Hollywood. Suppose that you need a little inspiration, like a... Real good-looking man. Yeah, to sing to, see, and make you really put your heart in this, what is the name of the song? How about a bit of ricochet romance? Ricochet romance, uh -huh. and you need a real handsome man to yeah. sing to, all right? Man, uh, right? How about yeah. me? No, let I, me see. Sing to me. How about that one out of the bed? That, just, okay, come on over here, buddy. That's you. Yeah, you. Penny wants to sing to you. Here it is, yeah. huh? Picochet, ricochet romance. <laughs> was company, but he preferred a crowd. He buzzed around the other girls just like a busy bee. And when you finished buzzing, cousin said you buzzed right back to me. Baby, I don't want a ricochet romance. I don't want a ricochet love. If you're careless with your kisses, find another turtle dove. No, no, not me. If you're gonna ricochet, baby, I'm gonna set you free. If you're gonna ricochet, baby, I'm gonna set you free. Hey, there you go, friend. I got you. She can sing again.
give you change back to you. Now, friends, for just a little time well spent, we suggest you hear this. Well, hi there, my foamy friend. What do you say? Drink Regal. Drink Regal. Drink Regal. <laughs> How about that? You know, the ordinary egg-laying type bird just sits on his nest and cackles. But not the Regal bird. He sings his beautiful song for the sole purpose of inviting you to gather up these gorgeous grade double A Regal Bird eggs. And the bubbly brew on the inside. Well, that's the Regal Bird gift to folks. Love a beer full of fun and flavor. So friends, we certainly hope that uh, you'll open up your heart and your refrigerator to the one and only Brew Bird of Happiness. Dip into the Regal Bird nest at your favorite store and uh, bring home a case or a crate or a carload of Regal Pale, one of America's two great beers. Well, we got a little extra added attraction. That is a little extra treat for you poor folks tonight. We're always getting requests to have the little tadpoles do more dancing. So we got time for them to show off a little bit. We want you to look at them now, and especially our little Johnny over there. Here they are, the tadpoles, and a little bit more square. You'd like to hear them, huh? Or watch them, rather? Ah, okay, here they go. of America's two great beers invite you to join us next week for Ozark Jubilee. And meanwhile, here's the Regal Bird's thought for the week. As you walk down life's highway, keep your chin up. It's easier to drink your Regal that way.